Did you guys see this one going around about one's hydration test? And a doctor that works with one admits to helping big names cheat the test. Do you guys see that? Because even if you didn't, I feel like I just told you. Like, I feel like you don't really need a lot more than that headline. This came about in 1998. I was a sophomore at the University of Oregon. And wrestling was the only sport then, until MMA came along, where you had to weigh in to do your job. There was no other sport like that. To be a goalie on a soccer team, just by example, you didn't have to get on a scale first. To play tennis, you didn't have to get on a scale to play golf. I mean, you, you get the point. You, you didn't have to weigh in to do any activity other than to wrestle. So it was very unique. It was a very unique understanding. It was a very unique lifestyle of having to beat a scale to qualify for participation in an event. Okay. And even with that uniqueness, nobody had died doing it. So all of a sudden in 1998, three athletes died. And don't forget the wrestling season's only four months long. So you go through, throughout history, the world's oldest sport where nobody dies, might be a broad stroke, but this is what we believe, this is what we were told, that nobody had died. To within a four month season, three people all died. Very scary, very heavy stuff. And wrestling had to step in. Our leaders at the highest levels, Dan Gable, just by example, had to step in and do immediate emergency protocol changes. They were worried when you have a sport as small as wrestling that the easiest way to fix something, you've got a problem, you've got three dead bodies. Three is at this point, this is now what we call a trend. The easiest way to fix something like that in a sport that doesn't bring in money like wrestling is you just do away with the whole damn thing. Exactly what Stanford was worried was going to come back and bite them in the ass over the admission scandals. They just took all those pores, they just took them off the record. They erased them so they could go and burn the files. And this is just what wrestling was worried. And I'm sure accurately so was going to happen to them. So they stepped in and they changed this. And they did away with dehydration. They did away with weight cutting. Not maybe. Not sort of. They didn't, they didn't sit down and talk about it. They didn't talk about talking and meet about meetings. And, and I do have to say that I do have to tease the sport of MMA. Because the sport of MMA has done this and will continue to do this. They will continue, only when pressed, to hold a meeting and they'll talk about things they could do to stop weight cutting. They'll have a meeting and they'll have experts weigh in on fundamentals and ideas that they will hypothesize would work in the world of weight cutting. And the reason I've got to say it like that is we don't need to wonder. We don't need doctors. We don't need anything. We have absolute diehard proof. It happened in the NCAA and it happened in 1998. Now, what are the chances? What are the chances that a group not overly intelligent, right? This is a group of wrestlers. What are the chances that a group gets together on one phone call and hatches a plan that turned out to actually work? If you just did it on probability, it's probably pretty low. But it did. They got it right. They took a guess and they got it right on the first time and the sport of wrestling no longer has weight cutting. Did you know that? And all that they did to take rid of weight cutting, it was a two-part. First off, you have to have what's called a hydration test. So you will get on a scale and weigh, you will then pee into a cup, and they will make sure that you're hydrated. So they'll now know what you weigh, and they'll base what your weight management can look like. But then, and far more over to the effectiveness, is they do what's called a one-hour weigh-in. In the sport of MMA, you will see them weigh in between 9 and 11 a.m. Wherever in the world they are, between 9 and 11 is the weigh-ins. And the next day at 7 p.m. Pacific time, It'll go live on a pay-per-view. So you have about a 36-hour weigh-in. From the time you weigh in to the time you're competing, it's about 36 hours. In wrestling, you have one hour. From the time that you weigh in to the time you're on the mat competing is one hour. And the theory was that nobody can compete dehydrated, and therefore nobody will. People will stop cutting weight because they won't be able to perform in a mere one hour later. They stopped it. It worked perfectly. Perfectly. Not, not a broad stroke term. Not, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit. No, no, no. It's, it fixed the problem. 
There has never been a person who's cut weight since. Now, I have a special opinion on this because I was seven pounds under the weight limit. I was the only guy on my team that didn't have to cut weight. It was me and the heavyweight. But when I say on my team, not just in 1998, in any team I had ever been on, I was the only guy that didn't have to cut weight. So I walked around hydrated at all times. I walked around fully fed at all times. And I failed the hydration test twice. And if you have a third fail, you're done for the year. You cannot attempt, you cannot even attempt for that same weight class for within that season. Tom Embry was the trainer that was doing this. I said, Tom, I don't know anything about it, right? This is all brand new NCAA puts this in. I said, Tom, I'm seven pounds underweight. Everybody on the team's come and peed in this cup. Everybody is cleared. Everybody is certified except for me. I'm the only, I'm underweight. You know me. You travel the roads. You see me on the scale. You see me get on the scale fully clothed with my belt and my shoes and my wallet in my pocket. He said, Chill, I don't know what to tell you. He said, if you fail this thing three times, I've got to scratch you for the year. Still, I don't know how. It was a color of the urine. There's a little tape they put in there. I, I don't mean to be graphic with you, but this is what they would do. And they would hold that up and they would make sure that it was it was clear enough that it would show that you're hydrated. So I had to go and drink and drink and drink and come in and I just barely got it. I mean, I just barely got it while being underweight. And there was a rumor going around the NCAA that the way to cheat this test it was raspberry Snapple, but it had to be raspberry, specific flavor. So what you would do is you would drink the raspberry Snapple. Then you would cut the weight you wouldn't pee, though. You would cut the weight. Your bladder might even fill up. You would get all that weight off. Then when you would come in, if you had raspberry Snapple that then fed to your bladder, it would put out a urine that would qualify you as hydrated. I know that was a lot of information. But that rule came out in 1998, which stopped weight cutting in its tracks. And also within that year, they found a way through Raspberry Snapple to cheat the test. I mean, I got to give wrestling a hand there. I mean, that's pretty damn quick. To cheat a test and to figure out how to do it the same year that a rule gets enacted in a sport that's only four months long to start with. Pretty effective. It was a very effective way to cheat the test. Now, the problem, of course, became what we call the proof is in the pudding. They then could not step onto the mat an hour later. Your national champions weren't even placing. Literally, defending national champion did not even place because the school that he was at tried to get cutesy with it, cut too much weight, he couldn't perform an hour later. But there are many All-Americans, many top-rated guys. So I've seen that one championship is taking heat. They're coming out in this headline. They're acting as though one has done something wrong. And I, I don't understand that. If one championship had put a rule in about hydration, that would make them the only organization that put a rule in about hydration. Now, if you found somebody to manipulate, to bring in their raspberry Snapple, if you will, how are you going to put that on the organization? How is a doctor who's admitted that he helped guys that could draw the box office cheat the test? I don't understand how, how do you turn on the organization. I'm just confused by that. Like, I'm not bound to anything but my own creativity, and I can't even creatively think of something, fiction or nonfiction, that would possibly make the organization who took a step in the right direction at fault because people with a financial and personal motive all the way up to licensed doctors have decided to manipulate it. I don't know where in life the manipulators that start at cage fighters and ascend all the way to doctors would be held to a higher regard than those that put a rule in in the first place. That's weird to me. The whole thing is very weird to me. Much like the NCAA didn't want to deal with weight cut. I mean, that is kind of a tough issue, right? If you're an adult, how are you going to tell another adult how much he can sweat? How many calories he has to eat? I mean, how, how is one adult going to tell another adult what to weigh? I think that that's a tough. I think, I think you're going to have a hard, hard time doing that. 
I think equally as hard is to have a government official step forward and pretend as though they'd like to stop a problem and then just have a meeting and talk about doing it. You don't have to talk. I mean, we, we, had, we had to do that at one point. We had to wonder. We had to guess. We had to hypothesize. So all great scientific things begin with a hypothesis. Except the NCAA did it in 1998. They stopped weight cutting. Weight cutting does not exist in wrestling in the NCAA anymore. They did it on a one-hour weigh-in. It's an interesting story. One you probably didn't know. And I feel it's a little bit underhanded just because the doctor knew about the raspberry snapple and was willing to put his name on a piece of paper that somehow that made the organization who attempted to take a step in the right direction as it pertains to rehydration tried to make them look bad. 